the next page, so you're going to scroll over one more, show an example of a graph, an exponential graph this time. Now we, you have read ahead and you, you might even see on your sheet a little bit um, ahead and, and, and you read ahead in your text, but we have a formula for exponential growth. If you look ahead on your sheet, what does it say? We're going to use this formula. That this. It's kind of a simple formula from our text. There's a number of ways I could represent an exponential growth. Importantly, what's changing is in the exponent. Okay, here's just kind of a little bit of a simple formula. Um, this is the formula our, our, our text uses. Um, and you have an example from uh -huh. doubling. Mm -hmm. If you don't like this formula, then you can use another example, another formula that you know that we've talked about in have class. Here. Remember what goes in the exponent for an exponential function? That's what's variable. Okay, we've got a couple of exponential functions here. Okay, I want you to um, stop your um, input now and let's take a look at what we have. It's okay if you don't have an exponential function because whatever you have that's not an exponential function will help us um, because somebody else has the same idea. Okay, so let's, let's make sure we're all on the same of what an exponential function is. Um, <coughs> this general formula, that are the, the text, of course, that you read ahead, um, there's some initial value, okay, and then this is, um, here's our rate of change, and then the variable for an exponential function is in the exponent, okay. So it's not going to be like something like x squared. An exponential function isn't something that has a number in the exponent, although that is not linear, okay, the, like, that would be something like, oh, you fix it, here we go. Whatever this is, just, just leave this so we can look at it, because this is tempting, okay, um, and I'm not going to, just leave it like that for a second, because a lot of people had something like this at first, I'm not going to call you out, so don't worry, but this is <coughs> tempting to say, hey, this is exponential, all right, um, lots of people thought this at first. But look at what's in the exponent. This is something squared, okay? And um, Katie named this, named this shape of a graph for us the other day. What is this shape? A parabola. And a parabola comes from a quadratic function, quadratic <coughs> equation, which means, <coughs> uh, strangely, a quadratic, quad means, sounds like four, but it means that we have an x squared something, okay? Um, just a quick um, explanation on why a quadratic is x squared, because that kind of feels silly that it should that the exponent is two, and we're talking about a quadratic. <coughs> Let's pretend just <coughs> for this function um, that we want to find the area of this rectangle. Okay, a rectangle is a quadrilateral. Remember that from your Geometry classes, quadrilateral, four sides. Um, it has some other special qualities, but that's good enough for now. It's where four comes from. All right? Let's pretend that this has a width of, say, x plus 3 and a length of x plus 1. And I don't know what x is. How would I find the area of that rectangle? I'm going to multiply length and width. Any old rectangle to find the area. Multiply length and width. So if I multiply the length and width together, not my very first term here is x squared. Okay, and then the whole thing gets foil. It's really it's distributive property, right? I'm multiplying every single term over here by every single term over here. So I'm going to end up with a 4x and 3, right? So the reason we call that a quadratic 
it actually comes from finding the area of a four-sided figure. But what happens is when I multiply those together, I get that x squared, and the picture of it is a parabola. Okay, easy to confuse that with an exponential function. Okay, we want if for an exponential function a variable in the exponent. So let's see what else we have here. Thank you very much for being willing for us to look at that at that parabola. <coughs> <coughs> Let's see what else we have here. Um, so we have various, mm -hmm. someone has E as the base, the letter E. Um, does somebody want to confess to this one? It's allowed, okay. Where have you seen E before, Brandon? Oh, I don't know, I just press the <laughs> You saw it on your calculator, yeah. right? Um, we're going to use that, actually, that number, we're going to develop where that number comes from, and we're going to use it on Wednesday, so it's, wow. this is good. E is actually a real number. It's an irrational number. Irrational like pi is a real number, but it's irrational, but it has a symbol that always represents it. So we're going to talk about where E comes from next time, and it's often the base of a quadratic, uh, excuse me, exponential function. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. It's what? It's like it says E and then it says in a, like 24 and that means you put 24 zeros. Okay, so that's a different E, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's scientific notation and that's telling you how many places out, that, that's a short way of writing very large or very small numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this is a different E and um, commonly used especially in um, financial calculations. So we're going to become very familiar with that. Thank you for introducing us, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> let's look at, um, here's what we have, negative 5 times 2 to the x. What's the, what, what is the initial value for this person's function? Okay. And then, um, what, we have, a, we have a number of equations, oh, let's look at this one. <laughs> I don't know the tendency. <coughs> this one has um, five. I want to compare this one here. And it is um, five to the x minus 14. All of that in the exponent. And then this one has five x plus seven. Look at the position of those two exponential functions on that graph. They're very similar, aren't they? Both have a base of five. They're both exponential. Okay, the, the, what changes? The variable is in the exponent. How are they different? One negative and one positive. But they, aren't they shaped very similarly? Are they, are they showing me an exponential a, a growth? Are they showing me something that's increasing? Yes. One is Okay, so the position on the graph. Um, x intercept. No, no, the x intercept is when it just where it's going to start climbing up. Like that one's starting at about negative seven, and the one over there is starting at about fourteen. Oh, interesting. This graph looks like if that's eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen. That's fourteen right there. So maybe it looks like 14. 14 is going to be where it's 1 at. 1. The 1 over there at negative 7 uh -huh. is going to be equal to 1. So this graph has a point on its graph. If I input 14 here, the output looks like it's going to be 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. 14 minus 14 is 0. zero. zero. Now what's 5 to the 0 power? One. Drag out those old exponent rules. What's 5 to the 0 power? 
Yeah. It's not five it's times five, zero. Five zero is the exponent. Zero. You don't multiply it by itself at all. You don't do anything. It's really. It's so it's five. Five. I know what's not good. Okay. okay. It's zero. It's zero. Well, it's we have. have we have. Okay. Anytime you multiply something by zero, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we have an exponent rule. If you dig way back here into your algebra, rules. Anything to the zero power, except for zero to the zero, which is kind of weird, is what is anything to the zero power? It's just one. Do you remember that? That makes sense. Something to the zero power is one? It's one. Yeah, five to the one. Five to the zero. Five to the one. No, five. I is an imaginary so number. So so five is the first power is five. Okay, that's right. Five to the one. One. If the power is zero, if the exponent is zero. Okay, we had a little bit of. Okay, back to me. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to go back to that fight? Yeah. Um, we can develop this another time. I don't want to. I want to keep moving with our um, with our exercise for today. But th um, there is there is that exponent rule that anything to the zero power is one. And look at here's the graph of it. If I input 14 into this graph, 14 minus 14, and I, you might not be able to see it, so let me. It, if, here, here we are, it's, this one was 14, wasn't it? Um, 17, 16, 15, 14, 16, 17, 16, 15, 14, right there. Okay, my line's not exactly straight. But it is mapped to an output of 1. Okay, so it is true. If, if I input 14 here, that gives me an exponent of 0. Now let's compare that 1 to um, this one. Look at this one. It looks like, and what Joe said is the position on the graph is different. Looks like this one has is similar to um, okay, I don't see a picture of it. But this one kind of starts way over here on the graph before it takes off. And look at this one. It's it's kind of backed up. The position on the graph is different. Sa it's the same shape, it looks like. Yes, ma'am? Okay, if mine's positive seven. Is this yours, Katie? Yeah. I knew it. But like Isn't that interesting? It looks like Katie has oh, added yeah, seven, eight. but it slid her graph to the left. Whoever this is, their graph is at minus 14, but it slid their graph to the right. Isn't because that strange? in the plus seven, it would have to be a negative to make it one or two or three or four. So if it was if x equals negative seven, it would be an exponent of zero. Okay, let's look at that. Nice, Caleb. If I if I input here negative seven, I'm inputting that just to find out where that um, make Caleb's point here. Uh, this is, so this is negative ten, negative nine, negative eight, negative seven. Is that right? No, negative ten is on eight the seven. very end. Nine. Oh, this is nine. Yeah. Eight, seven. Okay, good. So if this is seven here, let's look. Okay, so if, if x is negative seven, Caleb is saying it's, it's, since I have to input a negative seven here to make that exponent be zero, I'm inputting a negative seven. That's what slides it to the left. And the other one, I input a positive 14. That's right, it's opposite of, it slides the opposite direction of what you think. All right, nice work everybody. That's